Hello, welcome to Driving with Dan, episode 12. Today is the 31st of January, and as you can just see, it's the full moon, so that's what that is. Um, so yes, um, I first thing I first, I have to apologise for the lack of episode last week, uh, but the other things I'm going to be talking about this week will be the new Range Rover uh, Coupe, or Coupe, however you want to call it. Uh, list of cars, they've built, uh, well, built a new car. Uh, and then it's going to be about Grand Tour and Jaguar Repace. So this one, it is... All of it contains Jaguar Land Rover. Right. Got to go. Um, everything's all good around me. Let's go. Yeah, so you can see that moon. You can't now. It's a full moon today, which is pretty cool. So there you are. Lovely. Sights it, road ahead closed. No, don't worry, it's not my road. Oh yeah, sorry, there's going to be some rattling as well. I seem to have uh, picked up a pot uh, in the car. Uh, one that's for cooking, of course, a cooking pot. Uh, and, and it rattles, rattles quite a lot. Anyway, so yes, uh, first things first is an apology for why I didn't upload last week. And the real reason why I didn't upload last week, nothing happened. Um, so what happened last week, all that happened was this Range Rover, uh, the two-door coupe, which came out, well, which was revealed, not even revealed, it was sort of a, I don't know, what's the word? It was, I don't know, sort of just mentioned as such. Uh, so that, that came out and that's all that happened. The only other thing I spoke about was Grand Tour. So what the hell? Sorry, someone just cut their lane. Anyway, um, yeah, so no, literally all that happened was Grand Tour and the Range Rover, so I just wasn't able to upload. Well, I tried filming. It was the most boring video you will ever have watched, so I didn't upload it. Right, so the next topic is Grand Tour. No, no, it's not. No, it's not. It's the Land Rover. So Land Rover, Range Rover, have released the two-door coupe. It's going to be... Seriously, seriously, no numbers, and it's going to be based sort of on the SVR, but it's more bespoke. Um, I think there's uh, 999 are going to be produced. Um, and there's not much else to really talk about, really. It's essentially just going to be one of the most expensive Range Rovers. So there's going to be, yeah, I'm going to say it's going to be roughly £200,000 for a Range Rover which you could get as a five door which is more practical for less but it does look super cool so there was a sort of a one of the shots that they released was from the inside and it only shows four seats not five both of them have sort of cup holders and stuff in the middle um, so it's got sort of like the front row seats are two seats, so the driver and the, and the front passenger, and then it has the same in the back. So again, less practical, but it's more like a Grand Tourer instead of a SUV utility vehicle. But yeah, it sounds cool. It sounds cool. Wouldn't pay two hundred thousand pounds for it though. But they probably won't depreciate much because such low miles for a Range Rover. I can't see it coming down to more of a collector's item. But whether it does actually appreciate or whether it does depreciate, I don't know. Because recently Jaguar and Land Rover have put out quite a few special editions and sort of low numbers cars. And there's only so many collectors out there that can buy all of these. So which one would be the least, the least de desirable? It would probably be the two door. Uh, anyway, so yes, that, that's new. And another topic then that's new, also including Jaguar Land Rover, is Lister Cars. So if you don't know Lister Cars, um, they're quite a small tuning company really, but have also built a few of their own cars. Uh, one of the more famous ones is the Lister Nobly, which is sort of a 1950s style racer, but they're still new and produced, and they're completely road legal and all. 
and actually it's quite a funny thing that happened this week, including Lister as well, uh, is the they put out on their Instagram story saying, have you seen, I think, well, not a direct quote, but it was like talking about the Grand Tour. And uh, they literally just said, if you want a 1950s sort of style race car that's new, get the Lister Nobly because it's 100% road legal, unlike the SKSS and DB4 GT. So that was, that was quite a funny comment. Uh, but yes, anyway, Lister cars, this today, actually on the Wednesday, uh, have just launched their new car they've been working on for two years. But it's not a new car as such, it's just uh, an F-Type, but tuned. So the original car, 550 brake horsepower. The new Lister, uh, it's called the Thunder, uh, 666 brake horsepower, so somewhere in that supercharged V8, they found 116 brake horsepower, which is quite impressive. Um, top speed is 208 miles an hour, which is almost as fast as the XJ220, which would almost make it the fastest road legal Jaguar in ever produced, apart from it's not a Jaguar and the XJ220 was faster, but it's the second fastest Jaguar ever built. Um, so th really, really cool, and I kind of want to see more of that, see what they're going to do. I think there was a video that they put out on YouTube of sort of the launch, but I haven't seen it. Uh, <laughs> really interested. No, I am. I, I do want to see more, and I go and go watch that video. I completely forgot to watch it. Yes. Anyway, I might throw some pictures in. Here. There we are. So, you can't see much, it's rather dark, and yeah, it's the Jaguar F-Type really, not much has changed to the design, but it's all about that engine. I can't believe where they found all that horsepower. So yes, that's that. What else is on this list? Grand Tour. So, we've missed a few episodes of Grand Tour now. So we missed episode, what was it, seven I think? which was the Lancia versus the Audi Quattro. That episode was very good. It was sort of normal. Yeah, normal. And that's no bad thing. Grand Tour has been getting a bit silly. So having normal is quite nice. So yeah, that one was normal. The episode after was... Oh, yes. The episode after was the Jaguar XKSS versus the DB4 GT, but they're all the new cars. I just mentioned this earlier, we're about Lister responding to this episode. But uh, yeah, DB4 GT versus Lister Knob, no, but yeah, versus the DB4 GT, Aston Martin, but both of them built brand new. Um, yeah, fantastic episode. Really, really enjoyed it. I mean, it got a bit repetitive, so uh, I think this has been a press car. Uh, it's done sort of around quite a bit on different channels uh, and websites. But Jeremy decided it'd be funny to grind every single gear because it has no synchromation of gears. It's an old style transmission. Um, so every time you change gear, you know, you try and just grind the gears, which if you like your cars, it's quite hard to watch. And if you're watching this, you do like your cars. It's a really, really hard thing to watch. A DB4 GT just being ground on every single gear. Uh, but he's trying to sort of make the point of the only way to drive the car is flat out. Which is something if I could would love to do in that car, just drive it flat out. Uh, but, you know, they're trying to be a bit silly and drive it. Uh, I think it was up a mountain road in the fog. Um, but overall, I think that was, that was a fantastic episode to see that. And uh, what else happened is the Ford GT going around the track. And it was still slower than the Huracan Paul Performante, which is surprising. I think, I, I did think the Ford GT was just going to have it. But that's what happens when you're missing four cylinders. You know, it's only a V6 in the Ford GT compared to the V10 in the Lambo. Um... Yes, so that, that happened there, and literally today, the new trailer for the Grand Tour dropped for this week. Um, and it seems to have a Suzuki Jimmy, uh, plus a plastic boat, 
plus a jet engine, yeah, a big jet engine as well, not just a little jet engine, big jet engine, and that one looks really, really fun, um, it's going to be incredibly destructive, but it, it should be good fun watching, um, and what else is happening in that episode, something else is happening, I should read my note, but I'm driving, and I can't see, and I've got a map going right underneath my clutch pedal, there we are. Um, right, what was it? Oh, yes. And the other part is the XJ220 versus the EB110. Um, I'm a big fan of my Jaguar Land Rover company, so I am all for the XJ220. But if I'm honest, both the cars, the Bugatti EB110 and the Jaguar uh, XJ220, are fairly unsung heroes of the 90s, uh, alongside stuff like the F40, I think both of these cars have been fairly quiet uh, and are less known. Um, but both of these will be on track, and I think they're probably going to be saying the same sort of thing of the unsung heroes of the supercars of the 90s. Uh, and, and both of them had their flaws, but I'm really, really looking forward to that because I'm a big fan of both of them. I've, I've seen, oh, I don't know three EB110s before in my life, like in person, and I haven't seen an XJ220, which, being a Jag fan, is quite upsetting. I've seen the XJ13, but I've not seen an XJ220. Uh, but it'd be really good to get some sort of insider view of, of the car and how it actually is, even though Grand Tour are gonna make it incredibly stupid and it's not actually gonna be that real. <gasps> the light's green and it's gonna turn red. No. Oh, no, I made it. Yes. Right. Um, but yes, that's essentially it. Uh, there is nothing else to talk about. No, there is! Oh, God, I'm so bad at this. Yes, so the other thing I had to talk about was the uh, Jaguar E-Pace. So, this car has been... I, I saw one... I saw one a few months ago, actually, but it was only a prototype. But the car has uh, just been released sort of uh, on press launches and stuff. And Seen Through Glass was in, I think it was Corsica? Uh, driving the car and I think I quite like it at first I wasn't very well I wasn't that pleased with it when it did its bow roll uh, in its launch I think it, it, I don't know it just the proportions looked a bit wrong but now seeing it on the road it looks really good especially in comparison to the Evoque which is essentially the same car and not, there's a lot of differences but uh, the same sort of size, same market. The the E Pace looks fantastic alongside it. So it's a very much F type styling cues like all of the Jags. But yeah, no, I I like it. That's all I have to say. It looks cool. Anyway, I've arrived at my destination as my sat nav that I don't have would say. Uh, Thank you for watching. I will see you next week, if anything happens this week that I have to talk about. So, yes, thank you for watching. And hang on, what time is it? I'm a bit early. I better turn around. No, I'm not. I'm going to stop here because I'm a bit early. Yeah. So, thank you for watching. Ow. And I will see you in the next video. Cheers.